Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now, today on Woman Wednesday, we're celebrating a phenomenal woman who will be leading us on practical guides for entrepreneurs in business. Now, today she is a sales and marketing expert with over 10 years of management and leadership experience working in the fashion, marketing, and manufacturing industries. She holds a first degree in biochemistry and an MBA in global business. Now, she's worked with several groups and several businesses. She's also a Tony Elumelu alumni and recently an author of a book, Accessing Grants for businesses and entrepreneurs her name is Ifedro Simieti and she's our guest today thank you so much for thank joining you us. so much for being here thank you so much for now I always get excited to speak to women in business because that is what we are known for in Nigeria we have the most entrepreneurial women in the world so tell us a bit about your journey on to becoming an entrepreneur ah it was very very it wasn't that tough but I didn't I never wanted to be an entrepreneur I've said this so many times um, I was working with Nigerian breweries and I saw a gap in the market when I got pregnant for my first or, or for my daughter not my first daughter and then it was very difficult to find furniture in Nigeria I didn't even look because the automatic thing for you to do is when you travel you buy the furniture and then just ship it back to Nigeria so I shipped back the furniture to Nigeria and then I realized that furniture was contraband and then I started thinking I said ah, how come you know no one knows furniture is contraband why is there no doing this you know business in Nigeria why can't somebody fill up this gap so I started thinking you know the person who was really listening to me at the time uh, was my friend um, at the time Olamide Olatubosu who is now my business partner so we started thinking okay what can we do to serve this market that's how you know Palia Mubambini started so we were both working full-time before we um, decided you know to focus on our business last year so it's been an exciting journey. It's been tough as well. We've faced a lot of challenges, but we've been able to you know, overcome those challenges. So you switched from having a full-time job, job to actually becoming a full-time entrepreneur. Yes. What were the lessons? Now, give me the benefit of hindsight. Were there any things you, was there anything you wished you did differently? What are the lessons you've learned that you'd say to someone who is in full-time business and planning to switch to entrepreneurship as well? Um, I'll just say to do it afraid. Like if you have a, if you have a plan or if you have a, a problem that you are trying to solve, then just do it afraid. Some people are scared to take that step or they're scared of losing the monthly income, losing that comfort. But I've seen that, you know, with prayer as well, because I really prayed about it before I quit my job. It's been a smooth journey. Like, you know, you have those challenges, but because you know that this problem is actually a real problem, then you, you know that you're not going to suffer at the end of the day. So it's very, very important for you to know that this problem is actually a real problem, not just because you like it. Some people would say, oh, I love bread. So because I love bread, I'm going to start a business, you know, start selling bread. But it's not going to work like that. You have to actually look at your environment, think about the things that are in the market already before you actually venture into that yeah. business. Yes. And what problems would you say that you saw? What would you say you saw that caught your eye and made you say, you know what, that's a niche and I'm going to take advantage of it? It was when I saw that there was no one actually doing it. Everybody focused, other people doing furniture focused on adult furniture, office furniture, home furniture, but no one really focused on children's furniture. So we decided to start doing our own line of children's furniture. So that's our niche. And, you know, we're the pioneer in that sector. Brilliant. Maybe we should talk a bit about your journey through the Tony Elimelu Foundation. And you went and you came out tops as well. Yeah. Now, there are many people who want to go for all these foundations and who want to get grants for their businesses but don't know where to start. Where did you start? Um, to be honest, that was the first ever opportunity that I saw. And it wasn't even me who saw it, it was my dad. So my dad saw it in the papers where they announced the winners for the 2015 one. So he told me about it and he thought it was just starting. So he said, oh, if I, this thing looks interesting, maybe you should check it out. So I looked at it in 2015 and I was like, oh my gosh, it has ended. But no problem, I'll be ready in 2016. So when I saw the announcement go off in 2016, January 1st, I started doing the application form. And, you know, I was very, very sure in my mind that, you know, I would submit a good you know application and I'll be selected and I just feel like a lot of people need to jump on these opportunities I didn't even tell my dad when it was time for me to apply like he had literally told me in March 2015 I didn't tell him until the results came out in 2016 and like I put a reminder on my phone and then I applied so some people just need to take that bold step some people are scared oh is my business viable enough are they going to like me you know they start thinking about different things that you know fear also overcomes them so it's very very important to move past that and just apply for these opportunities. You wouldn't get everything, but you'll get some. And, you know, it takes your business to the next level. And not just because you're going to get the grants, because of the other opportunities that come, just because you're part of different communities, different fellowships, and not just because you're getting, yeah. you know, free money to grow your business. Okay, now taking your business to the next level, of course, is one thing. But then the other thing that comes into that is finding a way to now sustain that business. Yes. And unfortunately, the environment is not necessarily as conducive as it can be, especially mm -hmm. for women as well. What what would you say are some of the key challenges that you face running an MSME in Nigeria today? And what would you do to change those policies or anything that's affecting that if you were in a position to do so? 
Um, one of the most challenging things that we faced has been, you know, finding the right talent. Like carpenters, you know, you can find a dime and a dozen carpenters every, anywhere. But for you to find people who can actually stick to the standards that you want, especially because you want to stick to international standards, it's been very, very difficult. So it's very, very important for you to actually be able to train these people. And because we are not carpenters, so we also have to keep learning and keep, you know, looking at the, you know, international standards, trying to make sure that we're at par with what other people are doing. Um, that's one challenge, so finding the right talent. Um, secondly, another challenge is also funding. We're in manufacturing space, funding and power. So because we have to put a lot of money into making sure that we have electricity to be able to produce, also we have to, because it's manufacturing, so you, have, you can only make money when you do volumes. So those things work hand in hand. So you have to also make sure that you know, you're working on um, profits, not necessarily cash flow. That's, a lot, that's one of the mistakes that you know, a lot of people make. And we've also made that mistake as well. You, know, you think you have money in the bank because you know, people are paying for your products, paying for your product, but sometimes you might actually be running on cash flow. So you need to be able to put that in mind when you're you know, working on your business model. All right, now let's talk about partnerships. You started yeah. your first business when you realized you were pregnant and there was, yes. there was no furniture for kids. Yeah. And you realized the loophole and you started a business where, with someone, with a woman like you. Yes. Tell us, when someone wants to go into partnerships, what are some of the key things a person should bear in mind? And what are some of the lessons you've learned along the way? Um, partnership is tough. Um, but one of the things you need to bear in mind is you need to pick somebody who has a skill that you don't have. So we, both of you have to complement each other. Um, a lot of times, you know, people just look at partnership at the top of your head. You just see somebody and you say, okay, you know, well, let's do this business without really, really thinking about the intricacies. Sometimes you don't even sign agreements. So it's important to also sign agreements. L let each person know their responsibility and what the person is bringing to the table. So if this person is good at fundraising, this person is good at marketing, let the person focus on marketing. If this other person is good in operations, this person is good in finance, this person is good in maybe accounting, you know, for example, let the person focus on that and then both of you can bring your energies together because you need those things, you know, at the beginning of every business. So it's important to look at the skills, most especially when you're looking for a business partner. Okay, interesting. Now, unfortunately, Nigeria has the highest unemployment rates in the world, and there are a lot of young people who are graduating today and looking for jobs. And one thing that I've realized is that a lot of young people are finding it very difficult to put together a standard and a very good CV and also a business plan. Yes. Now, you've, of course, worked with business plans for a very good amount of time in yes. your life. What key tips and tricks would you give to young people that are looking to create their first ever business plan? Um, there are a lot of templates online. So they should first look for a, a template online and fill everything out. You know, the, some of the things that you need to put in your business plan, you need to have an executive summary, you need to look at your target market. Um, some of the, um, what would I call them, templates that you can use for um, things like your business environment, like checking out your business environment. You can do things like personal analysis, so talking, looking at the political angles of the biz of your business, how those things can affect your business. Looking at the legal side, how those things can affect your business, economical, economic side as well. There are different things that you should look at when you're doing this business plan. You should also look at the SWOT analysis of your business. You should also do um, things like your target market. Those are some of the things that you need to look. Uh, you need to put in this business plan because those are things that would help. You know, if you're looking for um, funding, they need to know that your, your business is also sustainable. So you should, you should also put like a sustainability um, plan in your business plan. And yeah, those are some of the things that are very, very important for your business, okay. your business plan. Lots of people are starting to, we're starting to put a focus, a lot of focus on entrepreneurship and yeah. business. But there's a question that has plagued my mind. You know, I hear different theories today. Some people say that everybody, you cannot become wealthy by working for another person. You have okay. to be your own boss. You have to go into entrepreneurship. But some other people think entrepreneurship is not for everybody. So yes. what side of the divide are you on? Is entrepreneurship for everybody or can it really be learned? Should everybody be an entrepreneur? I think what is important is for you to have an entrepreneurial mindset, not necessarily being an entrepreneur or working somewhere, but anywhere you are, you need to be able to take responsibility. And entrepreneurship is difficult. Sometimes you might have to take a job in between your hustle because you know you don't have money to you know keep the business afloat. So there are different things you have to look at before you think about jumping into the entrepreneurship world. Be sure that, like I said earlier, you're really solving a problem and things, challenges will come along the way. Be sure that those challenges wouldn't last forever. And if that business is not doing well, be quick to close it and you know start something else. There are always ideas. If you have that entrepreneurship mindset, you will always get ideas. There are always things happening. 
plug into you know these communities, plug into the things that are happening, and plug into knowledge. Or we continue learning because sometimes I feel like entrepreneurship is actually a pathway. So sometimes whatever you start with is not necessarily what you end with, but it just gives you that edge and understanding that you can actually thrive. So it's important for you to just have that entrepreneurial mindset. I also like the, the you know, you mentioned that at some point you need to, you might have to get jobs in between. Yes. You had a job before yes. you decided to become yes. a full-time entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And you studied biochemistry. Yes. And these are things that are totally unrelated to mm -hmm. what you're doing right now. Yeah. But I'm sure there have been lessons that you've picked along the way from studying biochemistry mm -hmm. and from working where you where you worked. Yeah. So how would you say that your experiences, what would you say are the experiences that you gained and you learned in the course of working in your former company that have yeah. helped you right now as a business owner? Okay, so some of the things I did while my while I was working, I did marketing, I did sustainability. Those skills have actually helped me in my business. And not necessarily those skills, also the values you learn when you're working for somebody. You have to subject yourself to leadership. You have to resume early. So, you know, there are things that you learn that you cannot learn when you're working for yourself because sometimes there's, a, there's, a, there's an attitude that you may have if you're just working for yourself straight out of school. You might not really understand that it's very, very important for you to have certain things like integrity. You know, things like that. But if you're working for somebody, they will tell you, you know, there are certain things that you have to go through, especially if you're working for a blue chip company that, like I did or a multinational. It's very, the things that you learn while you're working there that you cannot just learn. Like that, if you had to learn it in entrepreneurship, then you have to really, really be a disciplined person. So it's important for you, I think, to get those, that experience first before you now, you know, go and work for yourself. Interesting, interesting. Now, let's also look at you as a woman in business at the mm -hmm. same time. We know that that makes it even harder, unfortunately, mm -hmm. given systemic oppression. But at the same time, you still rise, you still succeed and do mm -hmm. exactly what you have to do. Yeah. But you're also a mother. Yeah. And with that comes balance and you finding a way to balance the different responsibilities that are bestowed on you in your life. Yeah. How do you go about it? How do you upkeep your lifestyle? How do you make sure that you have time for everything that you're doing? Well, at the beginning of business, so even just to in fact, first 10 years in business, I think that some things will have to give. I don't really necessarily believe that there's actually a balance, although you will try your best to make sure that you're there for everything and you're, you're making sure that you're not um, leaving your family. But it's, you have to put in the work. You have to put in the hours. There are times like people send me messages or emails at 3 o'clock in the night. I'm responding and they're like, I fear you're not sleeping. So you have to put in that work. It's very, very tiring. It's very, very time consuming. But without putting in that work, you're not going to get any results. And you will just be you know, on the same level for a very long time. But so what does it take to have that work ethic? Passion. Passion and the will to succeed, the will to, to survive against all odds. And it is not easy. <laughs> it hasn't been easy yet. So it's important for you to have that, that drive to want to succeed. Like from when I was young, I already knew that I don't want to depend on anyone. And obviously, I know that everything has to do with God. But it's, it's, So that has always been in my mind. So whether I'm working for myself or I was working for a company, I always knew that I had to be doing something. You know, so that, that thing is always in my head. So I can't be caught, you know, sleeping or relaxing. It, I have to, you know, have my own. I have to be able to build my own empire. I want my children to look at me in the future and say, oh, my mom did that. You know, mm -hmm. I want to be this because my mom could do it against all odds. All right. If I let's look at you as an author. Now we're looking at Practical Business Guide for Entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I was saying that a lot of people are becoming authors. Every day someone is writing a book. We've had Amonio Bolly, Betty Rabo. We have you. We have Olori Supergirl. Lots of young women and older mm -hmm. women as well coming, coming out to write their books. And that's also one form of business. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your book, Accessing yes. Grants for Businesses. Yes. How long did it take you to write the book? To be honest, And why did you decide to write it? I actually didn't start out to write a book, and writing a book was not one of my aspirations in life. Um, I think it, it happened. I wanted to actually do a video to help entrepreneurs access grants and um, some of the opportunities that I had been um, opportunity to get. So it first started as a video, so, and then you know, from, an, so from a video, it moved to an e-book, and then from an e-book, it moved to an actual book. I feel it's important for you to document processes, and which is what I did with my book. So I'm very excited that you know, a lot of people are coming on board to write their own experiences, whether it's in depression, whether it's finding your gold, whether it's, you know, just the different things that they've learned along their way, which can help somebody else. So it's not necessarily also the business side, also about making money, but it's also, I think it has also helped me become an authority in the entrepreneurship ecosystem. So it's important for you to, and I didn't do that just because I wanted to become an authority, but when you do something like that and they actually people actually see that it makes sense, you then become an authority. So it's important to document that step and also help the people that are coming behind you. Nobody's an island. So I'll buy other people's books and you know I also expect people to learn from the experiences that I've put in that book okay. or the lessons. Interesting. So for people who have not read your book yet, what would you say are three 
key tips that you would give in terms of accessing grants for small businesses? Um, I think professionalism, I think it's very important for you to present yourself in a professional manner. And those are some of the things I have described, you know, I've given like different templates on how to, um, you know, maybe talk about your personal profile. Some people don't really know how to present themselves professionally, package themselves, if, if you have to, if I have to use that word. And, you know, if you, if you can't package yourself, you can't get anywhere. Like people would see your profile and not want to look at you or give you a second chance to even invite you to the room. So it's very, I've put that together. Um, another, what I also did in the book was to encourage women in business. Um, I have a letter there to female entrepreneurs that they would have to wear different hats, especially because they're women. So they just need to know that they can still thrive even, even with all the hats that they have to wear and they have the ability to feed nations and not just feed their families. I've also um, spoken about different people who have gotten these opportunities, access to these opportunities, and how it has helped themselves, like their own personal brands and also their businesses. So they can see that, you know, it's not just about working in silos. You need to collaborate. You need to see which opportunities are available for you. And I've also listed opportunities. So I've given you four tips. <laughs> so I've also listed some of the opportunities, about 32 opportunities that are available for African entrepreneurs. So and I'm sure that many people would want to get in contact with you to find out, you know, where they can get the book. Yeah. And you also give out information on your blog as well. Yes. So how can people contact you, website and all? Yeah, you can contact me on my website is www.iferdurosimieti.com. I'm also very active on Instagram, and my Instagram handle is at iferdurosimieti. And uh, you can send me a DM, I'll respond to you. You can send me an email, it's info at iferdurosimieti.com. Everything is just iferdurosimieti, so it's quite easy for you to locate so me. So basically Google iferdurosimieti. Yes, and you can contact me. Ife, thank you so much. Thank this you, has been you. such a productive conversation. To enjoy more of this, our Ubunke videos when you just watch, Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.